You don't collect here. Pays by check. Big New York advertising man. Oh. He's okay, though. He's got a couple of cute daughters. Girls. Oh. Not here, though. They're away at some boarding school. Oh. Oh, no. You want to spoil him? Well, morning, fellas. Luke Carrier, George uh, Hawkins. Glad to meet you, George. <laughs> New carrier, huh? Well, remember the creed. Nor dark of night, nor sleep, nor rain, etc., etc. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck. Here's your coffee, darling. Jim? Oh, thanks, darling. Well, aren't we preoccupied? Mm, how can I pierce that shell? Are you trying to pierce it or melt it? Don't try it, baby. I'm too tough. You'll just smash yourself on the rock of Gibraltar. Oh, However, in view of your years of faithful service. Boy, are you flying. Don't talk, baby. Just give me landing instructions. Uh, 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 Jim, what will people think? Forget about people, baby. It's just us. <laughs> Darling. Mm. Look, Titus Willoughby sells 40 acres of hay. Well, that was a short romance. But this is important. It says here he got $22 a ton for his hay. So? Well, don't you realize we have 10 acres of hay? We do. Certainly. Remember that 10 acres you and Bill Cole wanted me to plow under last year? Oh, yes. It's a good thing I had a mind of my own. I had faith in that land. Now, let's see. 40 acres. He got $8,000. I can get 2000 for that 10 acres of mine. You can. Well, certainly. Hay is hay. Last, I can feel this place really means something. I'll be making money from the soil, resting it from the earth with my own two hands. What are you going to do? Pull it up stalk by stalk? Oh, you know what I mean, but isn't it great? Yes, darling, I think it's just wonderful. We'll see what Bill says. What Bill says? Bill Cole. Well, certainly. Didn't we agree not to go into any more financial deals without Bill's advice? Darling, Bill Cole is a fine fellow, a good lawyer, and our friend. But he is a pampered child of the city. The only hay he's ever seen was on a hula skirt. Jim, this does involve money. And you know how you are when it comes to money. I trust I am capable of inserting a simple ad in the Lansdale Blade offering my hay for sale. After all, advertising does happen to be my business, you know. But, darling, we agree. Oh, what I have to give of myself to win an argument around here. Yes? My name is Blandings, James Blandings. Oh, yes. You're the fellow that brought the old Haggard place. That's right. What can I do for you? Well, I came in to place an ad in the paper. Well, sir, you sure came to the right place. This is the only place, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> hey, you got a point there. Now, let me see. Oh, here, here. Here's an ad that I'm running for Brubaker Hardware. Think you'd care for something like that? Well, no. What's the matter? Well, not exactly. This isn't... You don't like it? No, but... Uh... You wrinkled up your nose. Well, uh... There is something wrong. There, there are too many words. How are you going to tell people something if you don't use words? Well, you see, Mr. Nellis, uh, I'm in the advertising business. Yeah, that's the gossip around. Well, in the advertising business, we place an emphasis on white space. Oh? What's white space? Well, it's the uh, use of a maximum amount of space with a minimum amount of words. For instance, this uh, Brubaker ad would have a lot more eye appeal if we just used a whole page of white space and right in the middle, we put one word, Brubaker. Now, wouldn't you say people would look at that? Well, I guess they'd have to if that's all there was to look at. 
afraid I'm boring you, Mr. Oh, no, Thomas. no, no, no. I appreciate getting expert advice like yours. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, here's the ad that I'd like to run. Oh, yeah? Let me see. For sale, 10 acres of hay uncut. Call James Blandins. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you want, half page? Oh, no, nothing that large. I was thinking of a one or two inch box. All them words in a one or two inch box? Well, why not? What about white space? Well... Say, why don't you just take a whole page and then right in the middle it says, uh, hey. <laughs> I'm afraid that theory doesn't work all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't a very good theory, that is it? No, I mean, well, yes, I mean... Uh, I mean, it's all right for big papers like the New York Times, the Herald Tribune. Now, don't go looking down your nose at the Lansdale Blade, Mr. Blandins. We may not carry Drew Pearson, but next week we're going to start running brutals. All right, Mr. Nellis, give me a quarter page. With uh, plenty of white space? With plenty of white space. Fine. Thank you, Mr. Blandins. Thank you. Mighty nice doing business with an expert. Yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Nellis. So long. <laughs> Well, I guess that's all, Miss Willisley. Well, one o'clock. What say we knock off for the weekend, hmm? Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Mr. Cole is waiting for you. Bill Cole? Well, uh, tell him I'm out of the office. I can't. I told him you were in. Well, tell him I'm in conference. I can't. I told him you weren't. Well, uh, tell him I haven't time. I'm leaving for the country. He knows. He's going with you. All right. Show him in. Mr. Blandings, we'll see you now, Mr. Cole. Thank you. Well, glad to see you, Bill. Are you really? Well, certainly you know how I feel about you. Yes, I do. I was listening on the intercom. Oh. <laughs> well, now, what is this about your leaving for the country with me, hmm? Well, it's been several weeks since Muriel has seen me, and I thought perhaps she missed me. Oh, she's taking it very well. Occasionally she whimpers at night, but that's about all. Ah, yes. They all do. All right. Let's out with it. You've talked to Muriel. All right. I have. About the hay. It came up. We'll put it down. I'm handling this. Okay. Okay. I put a simple little ad in the paper to sell my simple little hay on my simple little 10 acres, that's all. Uh-huh. And I don't need any legal advice on this whatsoever, as I doubt very much whether it'll ever become a matter for the Supreme Court. Uh-huh. And that's a very nasty sounding uh-huh. What's on your mind? Why not sell to the cooperative? Let them handle the whole thing. No risk, no fuss, no trouble. Because this is the only money I've ever made in my own place, and I want to do it all myself. But if you sell to the co-op, you're sure of a sale. How many buyers do you think you'll be able to get privately? Mr. Cole, for your information, I am an advertising man. And I have placed a vital and compelling advertisement in the Lansdale Blade, which I may point out has a circulation of over 2,700 readers. And maybe more starting next week. More? Yes, they're going to run droodles. <laughs> Looks like you have company. Company, my foot. These are people answering my ad. They're flocking like sheep. That must have been a pretty attractive ad you had in that paper. Oh, it's all knowing the tricks. You see, it's white space that does it. Well, they're probably down to the barn. Let's get out and talk. Not us, Bill. Me. This is my baby. Now, why don't you go in the house and have tea with Muriel like a good city boy and have a blotter ready? The ink on the check may still be wet. <laughs> How's my lost love? Oh, hi, Bill. It's good to see you. Jim's down there juggling hay buyers in the palm of his hand. Buyers? Oh, Bill, we've got to save him. From what? From all those men out there. There isn't a buyer in the lot. They're all farm implement salesmen. What? They've been flocking here ever since Jim's ad came out, all wanting to sell him machinery to work his fields. Oh, no. This is wonderful. Bill, you don't know, Jim. He's liable to wind up buying one of those things. Not Jim. He'd never buy anything as practical as a farm implement. Bill, you don't understand. 
You don't know what those men are selling out there. Why, one of those men has an electric blanket for the garden. Electric blanket? Well, it's a cable that runs under the ground to heat up the plant. Oh, that he'll buy. Bill, you don't honestly think so. Oh, no. Even for Jim, that's too far-fetched. Now, come on. Let's have our tea and relax. Wait for the conquering hero. Oh, poor darling. There hasn't been a single buyer all day. And he did so want to sell his hay. This isn't going to do his morale any good. So quick. Muriel, better get a blotter. The ink on the check may still be wet. I don't need a blotter. There isn't any check. No check? Why? What went wrong? Nothing went wrong. It just isn't smart business to accept the first offer that comes along. You should know that. Oh, I see. Playing the waiting game, eh? Here's your tea, dear. You know, I've been thinking of a very shrewd improvement around here. Pretty revolutionary, but just might work. An electric blanket for the garden. <laughs> now, what's the matter? It's a darn good idea. You didn't let those salesmen sell you anything. Well, of course not. I just took a pamphlet. <laughs> you knew they were salesmen? Not even a single prospect. Darling, maybe you better take Bill's advice and sell to the co-op. And give up on the very first day? I've just begun to fight. Mr. Blanding? Yes? Name's Quinby, over to York State. I read your ad in the Blade. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not interested in buying. Buy? I thought you had something to sell. Ten acres of hay. You mean you're interested in buying? Well, certainly. You haven't sold it already, have you? Oh, no, 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 of course not. I'll be happy to show it to you. You uh, will pardon me. I have a client. Right this way, Mr. Quinby. You know, friend, you're lucky. You're the first one to get up here. Yeah. You ought to be able to grab off the whole ten acres before the others have a chance. <laughs> Well, what do you say? This may be hay in Connecticut, but over where I come from, we'd say it was mostly overgrown weeds. Weeds? Yeah. You see that there? That's wild onion. You probably have enough here to sour the milk of all the cows in the state. Well, I... Yeah? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just look at here. How long's it been since this field was cut back? Cut back? Yeah. You see this brown stuff? Man come in here now, the machine, he'd have himself a fine time climbing down every two minutes to clear his cutter bar. And there's nothing to be done? Well, I wouldn't say that. You can uh, salvage some of it and uh, burn off the rest. I think $200 would be a fair figure. 200 Huh? Can't do any better. Wait a minute. All right. It's a deal. Good. You uh, want to write a check now? A check? Oh, you want to pay cash? I pay you? Well, you don't think I'm going to burn off your field for nothing, do you? Mr. Quinby, I'm afraid we're not thinking along the same lines. Yeah, maybe so. You just mull it over, and if you change your mind, I'm in the book. <laughs> Why do you have to burn the hay? Why, why not let that Mr. Quimby do it? Since when do I have to pay $200 to burn my own hay field? Jim, there's another point. Are you legally allowed to do this? You better let me check. Mr. Cole, we're not in the city now. This is my land. I'll burn it if I want to. Well, at least let someone do it who knows how. Mr. Quimby. I agree with Muriel. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. Yes, he does. Bill, kindly remember that you're supposed to be a family friend. And as such, I'll ask you to refrain from taking sides, especially hers. Don't be so bullheaded. What do you know about burning a hayfield? What's to know? 
I have here the very latest do-it-yourself hay burning kit. It consists of A, a book of matches, B, a handful of assorted fingers. I simply separate a match from the packet, so, strike it, so, apply it to the hay, and presto, it's on fire. You disappoint me. I at least expected you to rub two sticks together. If you'll excuse me, I'll get started. Jim, be careful. You know I'm afraid of fires. Don't worry, darling. Nothing will happen. And even if it does, there's nothing to worry about. Jim's will is in order, the estate is in fair shape, and you still have me. Please stop threatening my wife. And don't get your hopes too high, Benedict Arnold. I'll be back. <laughs> you, but it's burning beautifully. Are you sure it's going to be all right? Of course I'm sure. I took every precaution. Even dug a slip trench clear across the south end of the field. How do you know the wind won't shift? Bill, city boy, for your information, the wind has never blown in anything but a southerly direction in this part of the county for the last 20 years. And I state that not as conjecture, but as fact. Culled from the pages of the Farmer's Almanac. Satisfied? Farmer's Almanac? Now it's just a matter of time till it's all over. Meanwhile, if you don't mind my looking over your shoulder, I'll help you with your spelling. What was that? Nothing, dear. There it goes again. It's probably just the television antenna. Muriel, give me 19 points. Jim, I smell smoke. Well, naturally, dear. I just lit a fire, and where there's fire, there's smoke. It smells pretty strong. Look! The wind must have shifted. But it can't. The farmer's almanac says it can't. Look, we gotta do something. Muriel, call the fire department. Here. What's this? It's water. It puts out fires. Keep squirting. I'll keep the bottles coming. For that fire? Jim, the fire department doesn't answer. Hello? Hello? Muriel, come show me where the hose is. Hello? Please, somebody answer! Hello? Aquascut Volunteer Firefighter Company number two. Chief Luden Fosker speaking. Who is he? Blandings. Jim Blandings. My field is on fire. The whole thing is in flames. Oh, you're the folks who bought the old Hackett place, huh? Well, what do you know? Say, how do you like it up there? Never mind how I like it. Will you send up the fire equipment? Well, sure. I might even come up myself. I'd kind of like to see what you've done to the old place. Please, will you get started? Oh, sure. We're started. In fact, some of the boys ought to be there any minute. You see, your neighbor phoned in the minute he seen you lighting that fire. Well, we'll be seeing you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank heavens you're here. Hey, you've got a real doozy. Help me now, boy. Help me out. Come on, fellas. Come on. Hurry up. Do you think they'll be able to put it out? 
I don't know. I haven't seen anything like this since the Keystone Cops. They're here. Yeah, I know. We can hear their happy little voice. Oh, that's a doozy. Hey, Mr. Brandy, have you got a connection on this side? Yeah, there's a faucet right over there. What's your right, Come on. Oh, my roses. Oh, that connection is a bit. Come on, we'll take it out of the well. Come on, boys. Hurry up. Why, petunias. Look, man, look. You're stomping all over the lady's flowers. Come on, go around this way. Hurry up. Unheat that hose. Come on. Come on, boy. Hurry up. Over here, boy. Come on. Boy, they're better than the Keystone Cops. Come on, boys, hurry up! Let's get ahead of us. Come on, boys. Hurry up! Bring that hole right in here. Right, right in here. Right, lay it low, lay it low. Fellas. That's it. Now you got it all right. Fellas, is there anything I can do? No, no, just sit down and take it easy. It's only a matter of time now. I'll beat out that flame over there. Mr. Brandy, don't go near that fire. Get back here. Mr. Brandy. Oh, oh, darling, what happened? Oh, he'll be all right. Oh, dear. Now try and keep him here. It'll be safer for all of us. Yeah. Well, I've got to hand it to you, fellas. So you did a good job. Well, we get a lot of practice. Quite a lot of you city folks around here now. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, fellas, very much. Well, it's all over. We got it licked. Bully for you. Bill. I didn't notice you rushing into any flames. You stayed pretty close to the house. There's a reason for that. I happen to be a clear-thinking, analytical coward. Now, look, you two, it's all over. I don't reckon they know about that. Excuse me. Know about what? Oh, just sort of a custom. Custom? Around these parts, yeah. Of course, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Don't have to what? <laughs> well, after a fire like this, the host usually invites the boys in for little refreshments. Fighting a fire sure can parch man's throat, you know. <laughs> oh. Of course. Well, uh, we do have that case of champagne. Oh, but I'm sure they wouldn't want that. Hey, fellas, refreshments inside. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my poor house, all those men. I better go inside and show them where you hide it. By the way, Mr. Blandings. Yes? I sure hate to talk business at a time like this, but there's supposed to be a charge for answering calls outside the district. A charge? Yeah. Now, if you was a poor farmer that had lost your barn and half your stock, I wouldn't say a word. Well, but... what is the usual? Oh, whatever you've got. Uh, well, that'd be fine. <laughs> Just fine. And he didn't even leave a fingerprint. <laughs> By the way, now for a little friendly advice. When Eve Hackett comes out here to serve you with a warrant. A warrant? Yeah. Just pay the fine nice and quiet. Fine. Sure. Oh, I know. You was just intending to burn off a little hay. But after all, you didn't have a permit now, did you? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> hey, come on in, folks. You're missing a doozy. Hey, wait a minute. Don't waste that. What is it? Can you tell me? Ever since I bought this place, nothing is right. No matter what I do, it fights me. I shouldn't have signed a mortgage. I should have signed a non-aggression pact. Buy a glass of champagne, lady.